Hi everyone. It's been a little while since my last video lesson. Been quite busy, but today we are blessed with another day to learn a new lesson on practical research. We will talk about some essentials of writing a review of related literature and studies or the research chapter 2. So come on and let's start learning. First, let's define what is literature and research. Research literature refers to scholarly sources or a collection of published materials relevant to a particular area of research or topic under experiment, investigation, or study. That means that, for example, if your research topic is about online classes in the new normal, the materials you are going to look for should be about that particular topic. The question is, where do we get these materials? Here are some of the examples of literature sources you may use in collecting your needed data. Another source of data for Chapter 2 is the studies. On the other hand, research studies refers to the other researches or studies and actual experiments conducted relevant to your research topic. Considering the previous example, if your research topic is about online classes in the new normal, the previously conducted researches about it are what you are going to look for to get the significant data you need. Now, combining the two important terms for Chapter 2, let us be familiar with what is RRLS or Review of Related Literature and Studies. Literature and studies review are assessments of scholarly sources and prior researches conducted in relation to your own research. Meaning to say, these are reviews of the most relevant and significant publications or materials regarding your study to provide a comprehensive concept of what has been said on that research topic and who said it. In addition, it provides an overview of current knowledge, allowing you to identify relevant theories, methods, and gaps in the existing research or your own research study. Meanwhile, it is very important that you are aware of the purpose in writing the RRLS. There are a bunch of purposes, but I chose to discuss the five most essential purposes of RRLS. The first one is to familiarize with the current state of knowledge. When we search and read publications, articles, and other researches previously held, we get to gain knowledge about the present research we are conducting. The second is to develop your theoretical framework and methodology. While reading on previous studies and discussions relevant to your research, you will be able to define and understand the key concepts of your own study. And the next is to provide an overview of key findings and debates on the topic under study. Reading and looking for sources connected to your research will help you build a perfect direction, allowing you to convincingly interpret, explain, and generalize from your findings. Next, we have to show your research addresses gaps and contributes to solve the problem. Conducting a thorough reading on various articles and previously held researches will help reveal unexplored issues relevant to the current research. As such, you will be able to get familiar with the research gaps you need to address. Your goal should be to find a space or opening for contributing new research. And the last one is to give a comprehensive look at prior discussions about the topic under study. As you begin to gather the literature, you will want to critically read for what has and has not been learned from the research. Through analyzing various sources, 
you will be able to resolve conflicts among seemingly contradictory previous studies by discussing a common theme or trends. Now that you are familiar with the purposes of RRLS, you must also take into consideration which scholarly writings are generally deemed to be valuable for your research and acquire access to them. As you read works and materials, be sure to have the list and take note of the following basic components of a literature review. The first one is a description of the publication. It refers to the author's name. Of course, you need to get the author's name for proper citation of source. Be knowledgeable too of his field of expertise. It has something to do with the ideas he imparted. Moreover, be aware of the author's types of evidences used in giving his arguments about the research topic, such as whether it is a case study, narrative, statistics, or primary sources, and the reliability of these evidences. Now look at this example. And the second component is a summary of publication's point. This refers to the author's point of view or the author's arguments, indicating which are most convincing and which are less so. Certainly, you'll get to ones which are most reliable and convincing. And here is an example. The next one is a discussion of uh, gaps in research. It only signifies uh, the author's claim of idea with insufficient proof of significance. That means that you must learn to analyze the information the author is providing relative to your research study. Learn from this example. And uh, the next is an evaluation of publication's contribution. It means that you must take note of the author's contributions to scholarly discussion on the research under study. And this is an example. Once you are familiar with all those you need to take note of, you may start the process of preparing for your literature review. Remember, reviewing the literature means finding, reading, and summarizing the previously published research and studies relevant to your present research. What you will look for are sources that may help you solve your research problem or answer your research questions. And that will be all for today's video lesson. I hope you gain learning from watching and listening. This is Teacher Claire for ICOM channel. Have a great day and always wear a happy heart.